Okay, thank you very much candidates. We're going to dive right into the questions. The number one factor that correlates with poor educational outcomes is poverty. Our country is suffering from the highest poverty rate in 52 years. 22% of children live in poverty, 39% if African American and 35% if, his, if Hispanic. It's a vicious cycle. Poor education leads to more poverty, poverty to poor education. What is the answer? And we're going to start with James. Hey, Judy, and thanks for everything you're doing. I think the problem, <clears throat> excuse me, I think the problem really starts with the family. Is no matter how great of a school we have, and most of the schools are horrible, they're in horrible condition, we've cut funding for over 40 years to schools, that no matter how great the school is, unless the home is supportive of the students and help them to educate themselves and see how it's exciting to learn new things, we're not going to get anywhere. The government can only do so much. Uh, definitely the government has destroyed the school system and with all the new math and all the new programs, it really confused children. But I do know one thing with working with disadvantaged people is that I could heal somebody, but if they go back to a dysfunctional home, they're not going to get anywhere. They're just not, it's just not going to happen. It's like having a dog, you give them a dog bone and you slap them or spank them on the butt and say sit. Or whatever, you have to have a supportive environment. We need to remodel our schools and, okay. and really empower our teachers okay. to give them the love and understanding. Okay. Uh, Mr. Claus, go ahead. Thank you. Well, um, I'm interested in the poverty part because it has a lot to do with the uh, health and welfare of children. And I've been advocating for a lot of vulnerable children through the years. And I see this at people's homes, in school settings, a lot of different environments where children aren't really given the appropriate uh, tools to work with at an early age or any age for that matter, right up through um, college. I would like to see, instead of the federal government spending more than $60 billion a year on education, let the states and the people who live in those states use those funds more wisely at the state level. I think uh, James is right as far as empowering uh, teachers. I think there should be more, more of a concentration for practical education for students, whether it's addressing the environment or okay. civics or the food they eat or um, mm -hmm. phys ed, mm -hmm. uh, addressing the issue of bullying, etc. cetera. Uh, poverty compounds all those uh, problems. When the child comes to school and they haven't had a good meal or okay. they can't pay attention for one reason or another, it makes it pretty tough on the, the teachers. I think parents, for the most part, have given up on the educational aspects uh, that they should be required to uh, be assisting as far as assisting with as far as the education of their own children. Thank you. We're going to address all these issues and from different angles. So throughout the conversation, you'll you'll get a chance to expand on some of these ideas that we're furthering. So Don, would you answer the question about uh, poverty and how it relates to education, and what is the answer? Well, since I was a result of that poverty in my childhood, by second grade, I'd already been to four different schools. By the time I got to ninth grade, I'd been in 13 different schools. A hungry child can't learn, and I'm glad that Congress has passed this bill to say that we're feeding some of the children in school. But even then, I, I feel that many of the teachers are, at best, incompetent. They, they can't handle classrooms of 30 or 40 children. As with what we're having to cut back in the schools right now, we're again having these large classrooms. I went to school in Detroit where we had 48 to 60 children in a classroom. It was impossible for the teacher to reach to all of us who were having problems. Uh, the education of our children is the basic start of the freedom in America. Our children have to be educated so that when they grow up, they can join the workforce and join in a big part of the American, okay. you know, the American dream. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I think we have to do more to make sure that every school for, or every minority has the same money that any other school has 
so that these minority children can work their way up and join society. Okay, thank you very much.